This week, Drew and I discuss the topic of the week. It happens to be a virus that is forcing businesses to change, employees to work from home, and daily briefings from elected officials. How does it affect our premium cigar industry? Drew and I are going to break it down for you. Stogie Geeks, episode 324, starts right now. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Hosempa, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And- Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Welcome to Stogie Geeks, episode 324. I am your host, Joe Hozempa. I am at an undisclosed location, as I like to dub the bunker, as we are all in a process of working from home, staying uh, safe, and uh, listening to elected officials as to what our next move or getting daily updates and what's going on. But and, uh, we are going to talk about that topic of the week and how it's going to affect um, how this COVID-19 is going to affect the cigar industry uh, and the brick and mortars. And Drew and I are going to break it down. But right now, we have the little dark head boy from Texas. Drew, how's it going? Good, Joe. I'm doing very well. My family and I are blessed to be, uh, you know, treading through this, you know, as safely as possible. Uh, with a little scare with my stepson having a, he caught the flu, uh, which for him, he was a little nervous because, you know, we have a, uh, a 19 month old grandson, and so he was very nervous about that. But, uh, you know, in all prayers, everything was uh, it just turned out to be a simple flu. So, lucky with mm-hmm. that. Other than that, yeah. though, Texas is on lockdown for sure. You know, just like with everybody else, it's all shut down. Uh, stay in place policy has been put into effect, and you know, it's it's tough, it's tough for everybody. I mean, it's it's definitely tough on my industry. I'm in the insurance industry, as anybody, everybody may or may not know um and so uh to hear a lot of the you know uh concerns of our uh um citizens here in dallas it's 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 a real situation Mm. yeah this is um certainly uh unprecedented times is is a huge understatement for sure uh you know and i want to take a moment just to uh say to the stogie geeks listeners and the Story Geeks fans, um, uh, it, hopefully by the end of this episode, you're going to have a little bit of resources uh, to keep a, a sound mind. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we as a country have been in situations like this, uh, not so much from a COVID and a medical perspective, but from a lockdown perspective. It's been a very long time. A lot of um, Americans are feeling uneasy. Uh, different uh, counties are on lockdown and stuff like that. So um, we're, we're hopefully going to shed a little bit of uh, laughter under a serious tone for this show here. Also, later on in the show, um, 
I I found an interesting press release that was sent to me. Um, McAuliffe Cigars releases the ultimate inventory, quote unquote, program, pr- providing new revenue opportunities for brick and mortar partners during this coronavirus quarantine. And I want to break that down uh, for you. I, th- I think that that's a, a very innovative uh, approach. And um, no matter how we all come out of this thing, uh, either in or out of the cigar industry, uh, I really believe that it is going to change the way that people do business moving forward for sure. It's it's almost like a scar, right? You know, it's going to be a scar on businesses, you know, work from home. What does that mean? Uh, is that even possible? Uh, I know that um, th- th- there's been a bunch of m- mixed feelings uh, there as well. So uh, Drew and I want to just say to the Stogie Sto- Geeks listener that, you know, um, Definitely be safe. You should follow the uh, under 10 rule, and you should keep at least six feet distance uh, away and uh, consistently wash your hands and then do that. Those are serious measures that um, that shouldn't be taken lightly for sure. Echo that 100%. All right. So, Drew, you sent me a bunch of stuff. Uh, why don't you kick it off as to – Kind of like, I don't know, like, you know, uh, yeah. uh, on our last episode, you wanted to talk about this. I I, I kind of was hesitant off air with you to just say, you know, let's just wait and see where it goes. Uh, yeah. I know that it, I knew that it was going to get uh, uh, worse. Uh, I knew that there were going to be more restrictions, but I, but I didn't want to jump on it right away. But now that um, here on my d- daily job, uh, we are uh, under ordinance from our uh, local governor. I know you are as well. I'm located here in Rhode Island. Drew is located over in Texas. And it's been more of the same in regards to the actual rules and stuff like that. But also um, so much like now we're, we're working from home. And, yeah. and, and not only are we working from home, but probably you who are listening – uh, are working from home too and, and how that's going to affect the hospitality industry. And, you know, let's face it, you know, most cigar places, those brick and mortars that, you know, some of them don't serve food. I know some of them do, but for the most part, it's a hospital, it's in that hospitality sector. And those are the, the businesses that really cause a lot of the unemployment to be on the front line. So mm-hmm. obviously, when when we talk stogie geeks and stogies, this it, it's it's not only the topic of the week for the country, but it's certainly a topic of the week for the hospitality factor. Oh yeah, most definitely. You know, here, <clears throat> you know, to hear and see. I mean, I was in the hospitality business uh, for twelve years early on in my career when I was you know coming out of college, and to see what's happening now to a lot of these uh, mom and pop restaurants and even some of the corporate restaurants. I mean. It's very vital, you know, that they do a business day to day and, you know, they improve their their services or improve their menu and things of that nature. They work very tirelessly to have the best chefs that they can have. Uh, But for the most part, to see what's happening now to that industry is just really it's it's heartbreaking. Uh, You know, the hotel industry, travel industry another hard hit sector of, of this business. I mean, it's, 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 it's tough. I mean, it's tough to see what's going on. I have a few friends that are general managers, uh, with the Disney company and they have resorts in Hawaii and abroad. And they're telling me that they, you know, that, you know, they, they have shut down all their operations, uh, you know, and these are large corporations. And again, I mean, uh, they can weather some storm, but to weather it for an undetermined amount of time, who knows? Um, but here, you know, here we are in this situation in the cigar industry where, you know, I, I was waiting for, you know, some print to come out or to hear, you know, what, what was going to happen there. Because um, I was getting some, some, some emails back and forth, you know, a little bit about, you know, how, how do we know our tobacco is safe and all this other stuff. Well, before that, you could even answer that, you know, shutdown started to happen very rapidly and quickly um, at all the major factories. Right, you, right, yeah. right, and 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 uh, most of that to me relates to the manufacturing industry, where the reason why they shut down is safety because the distance that they put the workstations are mm-hmm. obviously 
you're almost on top of each other, right? You want to cram yes. as many cigar rollers in a room to produce a product. Because let's face it, even though it is a handmade product, it is a manufactured handmade product. And we've talked about this all the time. Our premium cigars are touched by 300 hands. Yes. Right? Uh, so, so you know, um, you know, uh, let let's I, let's take time to talk a little bit about inventory and immediate response. Right? Um, right. From up here in the Northeast, the brick and mortar shops are open. Uh, the ones that are open obviously are limited hours, which makes sense. Right? It's why some restaurants open up at four in the afternoon and don't do lunch because lunch is not profitable for them. So. The brick and mortars are shortening hours uh, there. So, uh, you know, as Stogie Geeks, we want to uh, let you know that you will have access or should have access to two cigars uh, if you go to your local brick and mortar. Um, the uh, shipping is there. Uh, that will probably take a little bit more time logistically because they're also shipping medical supplies, which I am quite sure have the right away. Uh, yes. than other su- su- supplies. I know that from just ordering stuff online, non-cigars uh, as well, that I order from my day-to-day life. That's certainly been impacted uh, there. But the brick and mortars are open. They are open at a limited scope. Most of them are down to one employee because, let's face it, it's not like a line out the door like like the supermarket. This right. is a luxury product. Even though most of us think that cigars are a necessity, but it is a luxury product, and we like our cigars. But most of us have our own personal inventory that could last a month or a year anyway, because we're we are collectors. But again, um, you know, if they break into the inventory, most of these cigars are sitting in a warehouse, and they are about an a four to six month supply. For some of the bigger ones, the smaller ones obviously go on a smaller supply chain uh, there, um, as we can tell, because even pre-coronavirus, how many times have we've tried the, the latest and greatest something or other? And by the time it got to the shop, it really wasn't ready. You could tell that the, the tobacco wasn't ready in there, too. So you have to err on the side of caution. But from a supply standpoint, I don't think we're going to feel the total effects of this to probably six months from now if, and it's a big if, if we reopen things, say, June 1. Because I think there's going to be an easement of an opening. And what I mean by that is that, for example, the best way to control it, because I've been monitoring situations and having worked for a a politician at the United States Senate level, I have a little bit of, of knowledge as to how some of the insides go down. Let's just say you own a small restaurant and you, we always see a sign that says, you know, uh, total capacity, 100 persons, right? So uh, I would imagine that if and when the restaurants and the hospitality are about to open, there would be an easement. It could be 25% of capacity, spread the tables around, do that there, and then have it kind of reopen. And that's going to take a little bit longer than when things kind of close down. And I can say that from experience. I've had the opportunity to close down my business in 2013, and I literally came up with a two-month plan uh, of what I needed to strategically close. And I'll be totally candid with you and, and, and the Stogie Geeks listeners out there. I accomplished everything in seven days. So – it's a lot easier to close something than it is to reopen something because to open something, you need capital and stuff like that. So I would imagine that there would be an easement when it comes to the hospitalities. Uh, that easement, again, I'm making the number up. 25% of fire capacity is the only way you could probably control that and then have them separate the tables and then have that go there. But I don't see that happening till 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 mid-May or June and I really think it's going to be county specific, or maybe even state spe- state specific as well. Right. Yeah. I was I was reading about you know, and I was shared that with you this morning when I sent you my, you know, our our show notes, and I was you know we were t- you know talking with Placencia or reading about Placencia, uh, how they you know they immediately you know you know scaled down operations and then eventually just shut it down within right. a couple of days just because. 
uh, of, of concern and making sure that every you know they weren't going to take any chances. Um, you know, they did a seven day you know shutdown uh, as a non essential business. Uh, you know, and and again numbers. You know, like you're saying, you know, we're the third leading. He's the third leading exporter of uh, premium cigars in the United States. Yep. Uh, that, that ships sixty to seven million handmade cigars uh, to the U.S. a year. You know, um, you know that's you know two or three months of not getting any product. You know, that's going to definitely hit us uh, later. But uh, you know, again, um, glad to see that they were definitely on the forefront of helping everybody else understand it you know this is all you know we're all in this together Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. like i said and 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 the only way to describe the way that that happened is what i'm starting to see now what happened is and you know i'm making up the time frame give it give it take a week or so depending on what legis what executive orders went down Mm -hmm. but when when you decide to still stay open under crisis I've done it, so I I have experience in this. Believe me, right? You 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 make decisions that you think are good at that time, and then you realize this just isn't going to work. And so, uh, what happened was they wanted to, you know, they probably spaced out the workstations, cut down on the staff, did limited hours, which is what we're kind of going through in the states here now, right? Figuring. Yep quote unquote, figuring it out, figuring out who needs to work from home, who absolutely positively has to go to work, what's going on. And then they figure, well, this just isn't going to work. It's not profitable and or it's not even safe. It's still safer, but it's not safe. And uh, from there, they, they, they just decided to to close down the factories. I'm starting to see that in the restaurant world now, too. Where mm-hmm. last week they did limited hours, they were doing takeout, you know, they're on social media thanking for takeout or saying these are this is our limited menu. Say they had twenty things on their menu, now they only have five. Okay, sure. Uh now they're like, eh, we're gonna close. Because if yeah. you look at it, the purpose to be in business is to make money and to yeah. provide for your employees, right? And right. If you can try to do that, sure, and you can make it, but it, 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 it becomes very, very hard for the for any business to survive if it's not operating on all the cylinders of it is. That's like if you have a car and it's a six-cylinder car and one of those pistons go, it's, it's just not going to run. You know what I mean? Right. It runs. You can get to your destination, but you're only going to go like – two miles an hour and you got to watch your radiator because it's overheating. You know what I mean? So yeah. it, 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 it's different components and parts. Uh, supply chain after this is all set. And we don't even know on the other end, you know, we have summer months coming, but on the other end in the fall and in the winter, if it's going to come back and, 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 and what type of numbers is that going to look like? So we could go into an easement over the <laughs> summer, maybe even a total opening, july august making them the days up right and then all of a sudden oh boy this was not a good idea in september october and then re see it go down and i think all businesses regardless of the premium cigar industry all businesses need to be prepared for that Mm -hmm. and with that it's going to leave a scar it's going to leave a scar on all businesses because that's lost revenue for all businesses across the sector um, and, and they're going to figure have to figure out a new way to cope and a new way to deal with lost income. This is not income we're going to get back, regardless of any stimulus package, I'm not turn it into a political discussion, right? right? But, you know, as well as I can not talk about elected officials under the circumstances. And, and it, it's just lost revenue. So it's going to leave a scar on many businesses. It's going to leave a scar there. But... There are a lot of positive things you can do, and towards the latter part of this show, uh, as as time allows, I want to l- talk about some of the positive. I don't want uh, this episode no. of Stogie Be- Geeks to be all doom and gloom. No, I, I agree with you on that. I, I'll tell you, I got to give kudos to a lot of the, I mean, a lot of the local businesses all over this country because, man, they're. I go online, I go on social media, I'm looking at, you know, I'm talking to different people here and there, and and to see what their communities are doing, how they're pulling. Pulling together to, to uh, you know, to 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 beat 
the uh, to not only help out their neighbor, but then also look at the long term uh, projection of 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 surviving this uh, altogether. I mean, the businesses to see what they're doing is you know their specials and and and. You know, like myself, I, I, I'm promoting anyone who sends me any information, and I'll put it out there to my masses, you know, uh, here locally uh, for all the restaurants, uh, liquor stores, uh, cigar shops, you know, my cigar shop over at Prestige Cigars and Tobacco. I mean, we're, we're doing the same thing. I mean, we, we put out some, you know, uh, delivery, you know, we're, we're open for delivery service. We're open for curbside service. Uh, know me over there. I, I, you know, I mean, we were talking uh, over the weekend, this past weekend, and and to see, you know, the the shopping parking lot because we're in a uh, shopping center, it, it's empty, <laughs> right. and we're the, right? And we're the only ones there, <laughs> and so it's shocking to see that, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, or you know, or any day of the week. I mean, I mean, I go past a lot of businesses on my way to work th- uh, every morning, Monday through Friday. And to see that, uh, you know, there's no, like, none of the breakfast eateries are open. You know, my wife and I have this thing that we, every Friday we go to breakfast, uh, you know, before we go to work. And, you know, we can't go anywhere. So, you know, we're, we're you know, we're putting our stove to work <laughs> overtime. Right. But, you know, all in all, you know, I, I just love that the community is coming together. On our neighborhood, neighborhood apps, uh, I see neighbors reaching out to other neighbors, posting that they have extra supplies and if they need them. I mean, this just kind of puts people back in that perspective of, you know, of helping thy neighbor. And I love it. I love seeing that. And, man, I, I can't I can't give enough kudos to everyone out there who's who's doing that and participating in that uh, active action uh, with other, you know, human beings. For right. Sure. You, you, you bring up a lot of good points, Drew. Um, you bring up a lot of good points, right? This is a time that you – need to assess your situation, right? And if you work in the hospitality industry, uh, it's more urgent than than some of the other industries that are trying to work from home with, with this new work from home concept. Um, you know, working from home concept is really not a new concept. I just think that from the industries that I've been in, and, and again, I've been involved at local industries, local chamber of commerce. Uh, I was an ambassador here uh, for Rhode Island for for the chamber of commerce. I do have some chamber of commerce numbers that if, if it gets to that on this episode, I can share. If not, maybe we can do it on the next episode uh, there as, as, as well. But, you know, um, it, you, you, you kind of need to assess where you are. Figure out a game plan and a new plan of how to survive and stay safe. And I mean survive um, both in the the fiscal sense for your family and uh, also if you're a brick-and-mortar business owner or a business owner, how to survive. I can tell you that I have a client that is in the premium pipe tobacco industry for my business, and they've always been online. Uh, July of this year will be the three-year anniversary of being online. Uh, and they're kind of business as usual, right? Numbers are not going up, but they're not going down. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's a good time for the brick and mortars to say, hey, you know, uh, it, it, now that I got some extra time on my hands, why don't I consider putting an online game plan Just in case, and put that in place for the fall, right? Uh, You can put it in place pretty easily, but put it in place for the fall just in case when flu season comes back on the the other end, right? Because we're going to have a little bit of an easement just because of the weather, supposedly, right? Uh, Especially if if COVID-19 acts like the common flu. But then it's going to come back. Right now, will we have a vaccine by then? Well, it won't. We'll be tested. But I, I, those that that's answers that I don't know. Uh, that's answers that probably we all don't know. That is answers that people are, are working on. I mean, first business to to get the um, get the vaccine and have COVID nineteen be treated like the common flu. Don't know if that's going to be this calendar year or next or even next. Uh, the first one's going to you know. 
if they're a publicly traded company, that'd be <laughs> you just got lucky, you know. But but all right. kidding aside, you know, you wanna you wanna come up with a game plan because I'm 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 looking at the numbers of my clients who are online and the ones that are considered, and they're like, you know, what do you think? I'm like, well, it's it's time, and and yeah. I've been preaching that anyway. So again, yeah. uh, it's an alternative uh, source of revenue, and it allows you to keep things going. I know some. Shops are uh, just kind of doing online from their version from home, shipping the product from home, or just going in the shop and get it, and 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 doing that there. Uh, especially for the Stogie Geek listener who where, where I get emails and say, "Wow, it must be nice in Rhode Island. You have a shop every five minutes," which is <laughs> typically true, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but others have like a forty-five, fifty-five minute drive to a cigar shop, yes. you know, if they want to go to a brick and mortar, depending as to where they are. So. You know, it's a good step for you to, to kind of replan your business. I've been doing that both on the Security Weekly side, saying, okay, you know, where are we going now that I'm working from home and doing that there? And then I've been doing that uh, also on my business side, just trying to figure out that there too. And if you're a brick and mortar and, and you need uh, a little bit of help uh, as to where the hell do I get started with, with an online stuff, I have plenty of resources uh, you can email me at joehstogiegeeks.com. It's not as complicated as you think. And, um, you know, it, it's something to consider in your business plan to get up and running for at least fall. You can be up and running in, in about three days if you have a, a, a pretty good sense of web knowledge and uh, a point of purchase solution to accept credit cards and, and merchant services. But, I mean, you can be up and running in, in, in three days if you really know your stuff. You could be up and running really in two days if you really know your stuff, uh, you know, to make it pre presentable and, and to make it functionable. But the ones that are online now, Drew, they're starting to do yeah. specials and doing that. But from the temperature I took, it's just – it's kind of like a restaurant takeout. It's right. just like a – it's just a little bit of a solution. It's not the answer. Yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean I, I, I get a lot of ads from the big three that, you know, they are – online presence and then but i you know again i mean you're absolutely right i mean we don't i don't get any from small brick and mortars other than no. uh underground you know and mm -hmm. other than that i don't see anybody else you know uh on the online presence and this is definitely the time to take advantage of that situation not negatively positively i mean you got to i mean people always ask me can you can does does prestige sell online and we're one of them that are not online. We will be, yep. and because we're perfectionists, we want everything to be perfect. We don't want to just throw something up. And so, you know, and I tell people, I want I want you to have a, a pleasant experience. Nobody wants you to have a pleasant experience when you go through those situations. So we're really thinking things through twice, cut once method, and be done with it. But continuously improving it as we go through. I mean, yes, we're going to have to have a service. I mean, when 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 busy when business is 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 hitting at all levels, and firing on all cylinders, we definitely need to have somebody there to kind of watch that, and monitor it, and see what we can do to keep our you know site moving uh, in the right direction. Right. Uh, right. Hey, do you mind if I move off, move off topic for a second? I'm not sure, but my only my only comment to that is only going to be thirty seconds. Uh, the beauty of the web is you can change it right away. Exactly. So in other words, you know, a lot of business owners, I, I've gone through this, through, through the project creep process of, oh, I want to make it perfect and I don't want to be garbage. But like sell five packs, sell 10 packs, put yeah. survival okay. packs together, sell it, do something, move product the best way you can. Don't worry about search engine optimization, all that other stuff. That's why I set a realistic expectation of fall. You know what I mean? Mm. But you can be up and running pretty soon with a bunch of five packs and, you know, get things going and work on your presence for additional income. Because uh, if you weren't prepared for this and most businesses weren't, um, mm. we don't know if something else can come about for this. What if what if this was unfortunately a on land terrorist action of some sort or whatnot? We'd be on lockdown and stuff like that. I mean, you have yeah. to try to figure out. A sustainability and a survivability model, um, and I wish the brick and mortar as well with that. Yeah, awesome. I'm gonna have to talk with Nomi <laughs> tomorrow. So, Joe, what I wanted to segue real quick on it was uh, I don't know if uh, Johnny could put us on 
double switch here. We both have our Yankee gear on. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, that's weird because uh, most people would look at that and say that that's planned, but that wasn't. And that's uh, great minds think alike. That's all. I'm. I'm. I was excited for Thursday opening day, but um, that didn't happen, obviously. And we knew about that a couple weeks before. And yeah. I don't even know. Uh, it would like again. It's sports. It's a lot of revenue. A lot of lost revenue. I knew things were very, very serious with the COVID when yeah. um, March Madness got got canceled. And the Olympics. Yeah. I mean, the Olympics canceled for a year. That yeah. that that revenue having sold stuff during the Olympics and Monday Night Football. I mean, soup on television. Super high ticket items. Super yeah. hot. Uh, great for advertisers and great for advertising agencies, but you know, that's lost revenue. Yeah. So last night would have been our home opener. Mm. So the, tw the 26 was going to be our home opener there in New York. Uh, Rangers, I had tickets set up for, you know, for us, uh, for our opener, home opener, which is next Tuesday. And yeah, I, I mean, this sporting world, I mean, I, 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 I gamble a little bit as far as Vegas <laughs> features, and I'll tell you, it's. Uh, I got another contact over there at the MGM Grand. He sent me a photo of their board, and it's just like it's it's weird to see you know zeros or nothing you know uh, going on there with the action that's that's there you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, yeah, this wasn't planned. I went into my. I, I've got a. <laughs> I've got over 122 hats. I think that's where I'm at now. And some are cigar related, some are baseball related, some are car related, golf related, what have you. And so I went in, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. It was opening day yesterday. And so for the Yankees, and so this is my, uh, I'm missing my baseball right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and a lot of people are missing a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah. For sure, and and again, we don't know when the, when the easement's going to open. Uh, I was surprised that in the in the thoroughbred world, that mm -hmm. tracks are open but for no people. And, yeah, no. and you know, uh, you can go to different sites and do your thing, and 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 there are some derbies that are on without people. And again, you know, it, it, you look at from an athlete perspective, the horse and the jockey train. For a specific event, there's a purse involved to get in that event. There's qualifications in regards yeah. to horses' age and rate and ranking and all of that stuff. Same thing with the Olympics. Like these these athletes, yeah. what if 2020 was their last window? Right. Body body wise, and yeah. they're just they're just not going to make the cut. I mean, they you know are there going to be Olympic trials again during 2020? And also, right. uh, I was talking to. Uh, Bethany, my significant other, and she's like, they canceled all sports, but they can't practice. So what about if you're in the middle of a season? I was like, oh, I guess you could do home stuff and do that. But how, how a game's going to be, you know, because yeah. you get in a rhythm, whatever your rhythm is. It doesn't have to be sports. It could be work. It could be, you know, you could be a, a poker player in poker tournaments or whatever. Whatever your, you, you, you get into your rhythm of life. And everyone's rhythm of life has been clearly disrupted. And right. uh, the business owners out there have been extremely disrupted as well. And the Story Geeks listener who's who's working and now they're, they're told to stay home and then they got to do unemployment. I mean, unemployment skyrocketed to, to crazy numbers. And like I said, it's just going to leave a scar on all of us. It's kind of like what, when I was driving to work in the beginning of the week, it was, it was more – like Monday, Tuesday, when I say driving to work, like just roaming the streets and, you know, mm -hmm. just just looking outside the town. And, you know, we hopped in the car and I took my little one uh, for, for a quick drive in the car yeah. <laughs> just to kind of get him out. You know, he can only watch so much Elmo and, and, and Mickey Mouse and <laughs> and and quite frankly, so can his father. Well, I'm just yeah. like, OK, we're going for a drive. Like I just I'll take you for a drive in the car and take take your sippy cup and your book and. We're just we're just getting in the car and you know we just drove around the car and 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 just drove for a quick hour or so and I was looking at some of the local businesses and they're vacant and that kind of had yeah. me feeling like a nine eleven feeling right yeah 
Oh yeah. And then and then now Thursday Friday that I I, I uh, you know uh, prepared to do this show. It took me a little bit of preparation because mm-hmm. I don't do it remote. I mean I'm still looking like to the side on this. Vi- I just I'm having trouble focusing like it's because I'm yeah. so used to sitting in a studio and having everything catered to me. And now right. like you know I'm on a test call with Johnny. Johnny gave me. I don't know what the heck this thing is called. Johnny Johnny gave me this this uh this scarlet thing and I'm like, "Oh, cool. <laughs> like what does that do?" And you know, it's stuff like that and and which is your world. And yeah. even when I'm doing this, like I'm not used to the the, the delay that that right. you have like as as a person cuz cuz we're filming and it's just it's just it's just weird stuff, you know. It's yeah. just uh, it's just super weird stuff, but you know, w- w- the bottom line is we we uh, I know I had a a 9-11 feeling Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Now that I'm out, and I'm not Mm -hmm. out, like, gallivanting and and breaking social distancing rules. But it's, like, it's almost like people are, like, COVID-19 profiling. Like, I went to go get a coffee, right? Because, you know, I've been brewing coffee at home, and I went to go get a coffee. And, like, people are looking at each other, and it's, like, a COVID-19 profile. It's, like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's it's just – it's just crazy times, you know. Let me tell you what's crazy. So we, uh, you know, for me, I have to go get lunch. Uh, typically, we pack lunch or we have leftovers, but for some reason, we're eating our food because we're we're housebound. <laughs> so what's funny is when I go to drive-throughs, like I went to a drive-through the other day, and they actually moved the lane a good foot and a half out. And they painted. This is uh, In and Out Burger. Yep. They 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 moved it out, and they you know now this is the new lane. So you have to reach to go get your package through the drive through window instead of it comfortably being passed to you. I mean they have to almost not reach out the window, but they they only stick their arm out with gloves on, and it's just kind of like wow. I was looking at this. I was like, okay, <laughs> and. You know, everything's like this, you know, uh, kind of like fingers, you know, here you go. And it's just interesting what, what we have to, you know, what we have to do, you know, to, to stay safe. And and as I told the lady, the young lady who passed me our, uh, a meal for me and my coworker, I said, you know what, I'm going to tell you right now, thank you so much for coming into work today. Um, and she was like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm like, no, I, I said, you don't understand. I, we appreciate you for what you have done uh, and, and stay safe. And so, yeah, that was just, you know, just stuff like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, this morning I, uh, I sent you, I, I was up early this morning, but I was, I sent you from the uh, 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 CDC, you know, the uh, update on the United States coronavirus cases, you know, we have over 85,000. Uh, the, the deaths were 1,301 and the recovered from the coronavirus is 1,800 plus. And so I'm looking at those numbers this morning, and I'm thinking about all these things that we're all doing differently. I mean, I wash my hands. I mean, I, I, I wash my hands. Like, I watched this YouTube deal. Not that I didn't wash my hands before, but I didn't I didn't realize how many things I was missing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. This guy yeah. this guy had a glove on. He put some dye on his in his hand. And he was, you know, the way he was doing it. And so I started washing my hands like that because I saw the coverage once the dye was all over the gloves. And I'm like, okay, so every time I use the lavatory or go go somewhere or touch something, I'm in somebody's uh, uh, part of my job. Sometimes I got to go inspect vehicles that were in accidents. And so I have to get in there. And sometimes there's things in there that, you know, you know, I don't know where that car has been as, or what what that person had. Or as far as if they got injured, if there's biohazard, you know, sometimes I got to look at these things. And so I have to I make sure I'm protected, you know, covered. And and when I get back into the office, I, you know, go clean up, wash up and then go sit back. It's, it's just really life changing things. Uh, sneezing, even sneezing. Now, I man, I put my shirt over my head. <laughs> yeah, right. Just right. just, to, you know, just things like that. I mean, it's just uh, but it's it's. But it's all good. I mean, I, I take that in stride. I'm like, I don't want to. I don't want to go home and take something home to my wife and and family, um, or any of my coworkers or friends or anybody I, I I do interact with on a limited basis right now. You know, the last thing I want to do is, is is bring something to their world that you know that I, that can be prevented. So, 
but yeah, to see all these 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 uh, responsible actions now happening with everyone, it's 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 it's, it's, it's an eye opener. And I don't it think is. we're ever going to change that. I don't think I'll. I know for sure. I don't think I'll ever change it. Even after all this is done and said and done, uh, I'm going to probably keep the same. Not probably. I will keep the same. Uh, 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 process uh, of clean, you know, washing hands and sneezing, you know, things of that nature. I agree. I just think kind of like 9-11, we've all been shooken and we've all been scarred and we're going to always remember this moment in time. Uh, and and so someday when, when we reflect on it, we'll be like, wow, that was a different time. And, and I bet you, like you said, we, we will approach um, social distancing differently. And even let's just say magically it's summertime and this is less of a lockdown and things are open. We're going to be a little bit more, 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 um, you know, uh, conscientious. aware, aware or conscientious of, of our surroundings for yes. sure. Even, I mean, you know, kind of reminds me, uh, I live in Bristol, Rhode Island, which is uh, the biggest and oldest Fourth of July celebration in the United States, and we do con like the best time to live in Bristol is like from May fifteenth to July fifth, right? I mean, there's something happening in that town every day, and there's a lot of out of towners, and there's a big concerts. I mean, rows and seas of people, and even since nine eleven, I'm just like you know they put the barriers up still, the National Guard still there. Bomb sniffing dogs are still there. We've gone in airports still. We obviously are still uh, dealing with the TSA when when we travel. I mean, you know, it's been what uh, 19 years, and and yet, and so it will leave a scar uh, right. for us permanently. Uh, this COVID 19 era, uh, for sure, for sure, definitely. And you know, my, my, for for you listeners out there that are uh, struggling a little bit, again. Uh, even though we gave some advice to the brick and mortars, you know, definitely a time to reflect as to where you are career wise. If you wanted to try something new or learn something new, now would be a good time to, to, to start to consider that path uh, yeah. there as, as best you can. And, 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 and it's hard to stay focused. You know, uh, I, outside of Stogie Geeks and Security Weekly, started a Linux class, and I'm on my third Linux class. And this one's like a big one for me. It's it's an eight week class. And between the working from home and doing that, like you would think, oh, you got to work from home, you have all this time. It's like I have less time to be focused, and and because yeah. yeah, because I'm just out of rhythm. And I think everyone's out of rhythm. Yeah, most definitely. I'm you with know? you there. What do you think? What do you think um, in regards to some of the other topics? Have you heard about the McAuliffe, um, the McAuliffe program that they put together? Yeah, I saw that. I actually, you know what? I I actually did something interesting this week. <laughs> I, I have a list, a hit list of things that I've been meaning to do. So now that I have some extra time, I actually went on the uh, brand ambassador uh, button that we have, and I went through there because uh, I think somebody was emailing me about going through that process. So I said, you know what? Why don't I become a brand ambassador? Ambassador, sign up for it. So I did that. Uh, I went through that process, signed up. It was very easy. Um, as I told the uh, listener, uh, one of our listeners, uh, went through that uh, process, signed up, got an email, got an invite to a uh, 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 brand ambassador, brand ambassador Facebook page that they have uh, for their brand ambassador, uh, brand ambassador, excuse me. Uh, so pretty easy, pretty simple, uh, very informative. There's a lot of information there. Uh, but then I also saw that they were doing this uh, uh, McAuliffe badness, and then also about the uh, sales uh, of ordering th their product through the brick and mortar, and then they would send it to you. Is that is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So uh, I actually spoke to uh, Amanda McAuliffe, who's the vice president of corporate marketing for McAuliffe Cigars, to this morning, uh -huh. um, and she. Uh, I, I, we are going to get, uh, McAuliffe cigars on Stogie Geeks. She sent me a bunch of dates. Uh, okay. we're looking at probably, 
um, April 3rd or 10th um, there. So uh, Stogie Geek, stay tuned for that because uh, I think that a little bit more explanation of the program and a little bit more explanation as to, I mean, let's face it, since December, other than COVID-19 and anything, but since December, uh, McAuliffe Cigars came up with two ideas that are very outside the box for our premium cigar industry. The first mm-hmm. being Predex, and we had an episode based upon that uh, there, and we're going to get answers to uh, that as well. Suddenly, uh, something like that and something like the uh, FDA and the topics and all of that, suddenly with this crisis, it probably doesn't become important anymore. Right? There are bigger things to worry about that the nation has to take care of. So sure. guaranteed that we're most likely going to be kicking that can down the road to 2021 uh, for sure, because there's going to be a lot of monitoring of other uh, more important issues than that. But um, so they came up with PredX in December there and then launched that. And, and then now they came up with a, a program, McAuliffe Cigars. And this program is called uh, it, it's called, quote unquote, the ultimate inventory program. And what it do, does is it provides revenue opportunities for brick and mortar partners uh, partners during the coronavirus quarantine. So in other words, brick and mortars can now take orders uh, for a box or boxes or what their um, what their um, customers would, would want. And as opposed to. Um, you know, ordering it from McAuliffe, having it shipped to the brick and mortar, and then having the brick and mortar send it to the the, the um, actual customer. Uh, McAuliffe's Gaz is is offering a straight up drop ship to them. Yeah. Now, this is fascinating. Okay, because two things happen. Number one, um, they gave a list of participating shops for that. So, yep, Stogie, Geeks, members. if you want that list. Email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I'm not going to take the time out for the showtime to review all the brick and mortars. I mean, there are basically 16 retailers and partners across 14 states that will will ship that to you uh, there. So uh, Amanda had uh, given me that that list. So if you are looking for that uh, pro- program, but also retailers, you know, uh, uh, you don't have to be online, right? So yeah. again. You know, maybe through social media or something, you could put uh, together a light program in place that would focus, obviously, on McAuliffe cigars. But I wonder if this could be a trend moving forward. Yeah, no, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm I'm on the site. uh, I was on the site uh, early in the week, and then when I saw it come through, uh, man, it's it's pretty self-explanatory, very easy to follow, very easy to go through and navigate. Uh, you know, like I'm on the site now and it says I'm a, I'm a McAuliffe partner program, ultimate inventory member, or a McAuliffe partner program member, or, you know, an ultimate inventory partner. Uh, they want to make a purchase from an ultimate, uh, inventory partner. Uh, and then the explanation of, you know, you know, during the quarantine, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. So when very, it, very it, it, it's, it's awesome. It's innovative and it's out of the box. Now yes. there's been a little bit of reluctance that I've heard about this. Um, for example, well now the customer, uh, the cigar consumer, I'm sorry, the cigar manufacturer has direct access to the consumer, right? Mm-hmm. As opposed to going through the brick and mortar and they can do business with them directly and therefore you can get stuff cheaper. Okay. Um, Having been a cigar rep in my history of uh, cigar duties from the industry, uh, I was also a shop owner at one point uh, mm-hmm. and also a, a brand ambassador at another point. And so, you know, uh, resume, I was a brand ambassador for Altidus. Uh, and then I was a, um, I was a cigar rep for a uh, cigar company and then um pre that pre all of that i was a uh, business owner for a spotted dog cigar company over in providence rhode island so you know it, it's it's one it, it's one of those things where the M- McAuliffe cigars just wants to get the product out and to offer help 
right? Yeah. They, 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 they don't want to sell two boxes to Joe Smith or Jane Smith on 125 Main Street and, 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 and do that. They solely are there for those brick and mortars. They're trying their best. And hats off to their crew for just taking outside of the box concepts and saying, "Hey, you know, it's some revenue again." Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be the short term motto for probably all of us, right? It's yeah. at, at, at whatever level we're at in whatever industry we're at, it's some revenue. It puts some money in the pockets of the brick and mortars. It allows them to keep their clients happy, and who knows? If they market that right, like if I owned one of these 16 retailer partners that are across 14 different states, I, it would be, again, it's another offering. And if I and if I owned a brick and mortar cigar shop at this point in time, I would be online. I mean, yeah. I, I, I deal a little bit more uh, business-wise outside of the premium cigar from my day-to-day. But I yeah. tell those, those small businesses, especially if they're in like beautiful towns where the people visit and they buy trinkets, like you know, you buy, you go to Newport, Rhode Island, or Bristol, Rhode Island, and you do that, you get thousands of customers who come to Bristol because of the parade, like I mentioned before, or come to Newport because it's a tourist destination. I'm sure there are beautiful places in Texas as there are in Miami and all. And then you know that's revenue that you could be getting throughout the year, not only when they visit once once a week for their vacation or something like that, you know, and, yeah. and, and having an online presence is very, very important. And there are protocols that you need to put in place and it can be tricky for some of the unknown, but you can definitely, you know, consider that as an option in short term, this whole ultimate inventory concept, again, it's some money better than no money. Right. Oh, and right. It, for those brick and mortars, they should be taking advantage of that, um, that option and yeah. and let's face it whether you're new to McAuliffe cigars or not if these retailers had it in their shops chances are they're not in the bargain bin and people are buying them right so they brought them in for a reason whatever the business reason is that that's how it was there now i can tell you that when i owned the cigar shop online wasn't really a concept we knew about it but we were still on 56k modem Right. You know what I mean? So we were we. So our mind was like, I can't even go online to search for a freaking baseball score. You know what I mean? I'll I'll, I'll turn on ESPN Sports Center and and get it faster. You know, and and yeah. it was just because it, it was the late '90s and early 2000s, and it was just the time. But now, with all the resources that are out there to develop a website and throw e-commerce on there and a merchant yes. solutions for you, all the more reason to jump online. Or to, again, oh, yeah. to, to put it as part of your process. Yeah. I like what Dan Thompson had to say, uh, the president of Macau Cigars. I mean, he, yeah, I mean, he stated on the website, I think it was and just straight out and just, and very, you know, I, I love, I love what he said. He goes, we intend to become one of the preferred manufacturers serving B&Ms with an innovative solutions, quality products, and exceptional value. We are here for the long run. And we are working every day to earn and trust, earn the trust and confidence of the consumer and the business partners. And that's from Dan Thompson, president of Macau Cigars. I mean that. Mm -hmm. I mean that's awesome. I mean to, to read that, to understand, you know, where the, the angle they're coming from. It's not about getting ahead of the B and M's. It's about working hand in hand with the B and M's to the consumers. Uh, you know, with everything they got going on with the uh, ambassador program, I mean, they're 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 absolutely thinking outside the box for sure. And I, mm -hmm. I yeah, they're to take take away from that is uh, everybody, you know, needs to be on that same process thought of of just making sure that you're you know using your medium uh, media as much as you can to the advantage for all cigar consumers. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking of McAuliffe Cigars, Stogie Geeks, if you want to look into becoming a brand ambassador, you can go to stogiegeeks.com and click on the McAuliffe logo. Sign up like Drew previously explained. It's easy. You get access to their Facebook group. Um, they're going to be having contests and do there. And I'm pretty sure that because yeah. of this whole COVID-19, they're going to be having innovative con uh, uh, contest as well. And it's a great way to step into the industry. And if you haven't had a chance to have a McAuliffe cigar, 
get out there and um, see if your local brick and mortar has them. If you're looking for the list, you can email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com. I'll give you the list offline, and you can uh, follow that process there. Um, Conference-wise, uh, immediately the uh, TAA uh, announced that it's going to cancel their annual convention, obviously due to the outbreak. And I can tell you that outside of my Stogie Geeks responsibility um, – Conferences are being canceled and all rescheduled uh, for obvious reason. Uh, if you've ever been to uh, a uh, conference, uh, it's quite impossible to stay one foot away from someone, let alone the minimum six that the government's re requiring. I mean, you're literally, um, you know, all over the conference floor and yeah. shaking hands, uh, making deals pushing your product there. Uh, I can tell you locally that I was scheduled um, next week to be in Boston for Security Weekly, and that got canceled, and they rescheduled it. Uh, I think their rescheduling date is, was a little bit optimistic, um, but again, they're going to reschedule. And again, conference is different, right? They, they, you, you have a, a sector of time, and then if you postpone it three, four, five months down, you think there's going to be an easement. But let's face it, right? Regardless of whether the conferences do happen or get rescheduled and stuff like that, I really think attendance is going to be ill attended. So yeah. businesses, especially in the ones that survive on conferences, if it's going to be ill attended anyway, kind of like a 9-11 situation, right? We all got scars from that situation, We've changed the way we travel. TSA was was born. Some people haven't gotten on a plane since. Other people have will, will drive more than fly. Whatever it, what, the consumer behavior for conferences, I think is going to be number one the last to open up because the masses are there. But number two, I think attendance could be a little bit ill attended for sure. Which means that you're going to need a new target audience to focus on your product. So why not take it online the best way you can? Oh yeah. There you go. You know, Hey, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I know we're getting, getting ready to wrap up here in a little bit, but, uh, so let's talk cigars. You want to talk cigars? I got, I got, I got a segment I've been working on privately. I've been telling you guys little by little, but the segment is called, what are you smoking? Yeah. So, so I just wanted to see if uh, you want to jump to that or not. Yeah, let's, have, let's, let's jump to that, and then we'll wrap up. Let's keep it on a positive note. Let's keep it. Let's keep it as stogie geekish as we can. <laughs> All right. Without talking so, doom and gloom. So you guys will start seeing this this segment I got coming out. It's called "What Are You Smoking?" And of course, it'll start with me. I'll be smoking something, a stick, a stogie of choice, and then you guys bounce back to me. We talk about it, whatever. We get into these little chats, minor discussions, talk about ratings and what have you, or whatnot, and uh, go from there. So, Joe, right. what have you what have you been smoking? No way, man. You said you're going first. Oh, okay. I'll breaking, go first. Okay. I'm not breaking rules. Those are your I'm rules. Gonna... It's your gig. It's your rules. <laughs> you All right. Rules. I'm going to kick it off then. Uh, <laughs> Dumbarton Tobacco Interest Sobremisa Cervantes. Have you had? What? Have you had? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So medium to full smoke, Lajero, uh, smooth, notes of cedar, cocoa, coffee, and, which is met with a peppery uh, retro inhale, if you uh, in, if you guys retro inhale. Uh, the aroma is pleasing to the nose, provides the smoker a creamy, sweet, lingering finish. Uh, this cigar for me, I've already had eight of them. <laughs> so I've been digging into my uh, Dumbarton tobacco uh uh, and trust uh, 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 hoarding. I actually been hoarding these cigars, uh, all of his line. Um, uh, great cigar, uh, rappers, uh, Ecuador Habano, uh, grade one, dark rosado. Uh, binder is the San Andreas Negro, uh, Negro and filler is uh, Nicaraguan and Pennsylvania. Uh, this Stone Geeks rating I gave on this was a box split. Uh, love this cigar, like this cigar. Uh, I just don't know if I'll go through them enough uh, in a year, so I like to box split 
a couple of these boxes probably with a few friends. Uh, other than that, I mean, uh, that that's it's been a wonderful experience, cigar to cigar. I know early on some people had some issues with the draw, uh, with the draw. Uh, I didn't have any, so maybe they have fixed that over the last couple of years. But uh, cigar is a very great cigar. Just want to put it out there like that. There you go. Absolutely. Um, my, I'm not working in the studio, right? So with this, <laughs> so so with this whole work from home thing, um, when my little guy goes for a nap, thank God he's a sleeper. He's always been a sleeper. So very fortunate nice. with that. Um, when he goes for his nap, uh, I get two and a half hours, and I gotta I gotta pick and choose my time to really push to speak to people in a quiet environment who I need to get business done and do that there. Although my son has spoken to leading cybersecurity CEOs over the past week and a half. <laughs> for sure. For sure. You know what I mean? Nice. And, and, and a couple of uh, cigar uh, potential sponsors that we're working on and whatnot. Uh, Caden loves to um, say hi to everyone uh, nice. when he's up. But when he's been napping, um, I've been choosing wisely, right? Cause it's not, it's not like I'm in the studio and I can just fire up a stick and, and, and go for it and have my morning stick there. Um, yeah. you know, even though I have a workplace that is separate from the home, uh, I can't leave him unattended. <laughs> He's 18 months. So, <laughs> so that doesn't work. Uh, you know, um, I don't think my significant other would appreciate me ripping out a Robusto uh, in the middle of the kitchen. So nope. having obeying all rules, um, when, when he goes there, I've been choosing wisely. And uh, I've had this week Don Carlos Personal Reserve Robusto. Mm. And that is a five, five and a, uh, one fourth by 50. Wrapper, binder, filler are all undisclosed. It's available in one size, box of 20. I gave you the, uh, the size uh, there. And let me tell you something. Um, I, I've been go I, during these times. I've been trying to smoke for taste, yeah. and for I don't want to say enjoyment because I enjoy what what I do on when 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 we we have normal business stuff going on. But yeah, I've 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 had that uh, twice this week, so that would certainly count as Joe. What have you been smoking? Box worthy all day. Uh, nice. It's just it's just old school tobacco flavor. Um, and, and it's, it's so good. Uh, the retro hail is where it's at. That's where the notes kick in. I get a little bit of caramel and some pepper, uh, light, light pepper, uh, again, and, 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 and the spice just kind of kicks through. Uh, I, I went and bought, uh, I went to a local brick and mortar, uh, and I bought a bunch of Davidoffs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because if I'm going to go, I'm going to go. Yeah, that's you right. Know I mean? <laughs> you know, so uh, I've been doing uh, the, the Nicaraguan Davidoff or the uh, Oscuro, uh by, by, by Davidoff. So th right. those have been kind of like like my three that I've been having. And I did have a hankering. I know I'm kind of all boxing it in, but that's okay because you can do a couple more and then we'll wrap up. Right. But right. um uh, I did have boxed in. I was like, man, I have a hankering for the uh, Green Hornet by Black Label Works. You know, yes. <laughs> so so I, I've been like strategically uh, um, placing what I'm smoking there. Yeah. But yesterday I did have the Cosecha 146 as well by Placencia. So Placencia, I've been yeah. I've been kind of like picking and choosing because I don't have a cigar in like you. Yeah. And even if I did, uh, it's still a little too cold for my little one to uh, run around, um, yeah. you know, and, and stuff like that. And and plus, I don't want him really running around. Whenever I'm taking him right. out for for quick walks, he's staying like in his stroller, and right. that's it. You know what I mean? Even if I had to run an errand or whatever, I'm not putting him in the grocery cart. He's in his stroller, and I'm getting a couple of things. But now we're not taking him out um, at all. Uh, so right. it's like, you know, when he takes a nap, I'll go do that. I'll sit outside, have, have, uh, you know, the weather's been, been pretty decent here. It's, it's in the high fifties and sixties. So that, that's pretty tolerable. I put my golf shirt on, 
you know, that allows me to play golf in, in, in 32 degree yeah. weather and I'm pretty comfortable uh, there. So I've been I've been really selective just yeah. because my, my cadence has uh, slowed down a little bit uh, with these. And, and I've been doing something and I'll kind of wrap up what I've been smoking with this is I've been going for like nightly cigar walks, you know, without, <laughs> without the little one. And it's just, yeah. it's just, it's just weird because like, uh, you know, uh, w- when we're in G unit studios under either Stogie geeks or security weekly, we have this yeah. humidor full of stuff and we can just walk in and I'm used to just ripping up a cigar and then doing that there. But you know, Paul has uh, made, made the executive decision that we are to work from home. I think it's a wise decision, it's a smart decision there. Yeah. But um yeah, so I've been I've been extremely selective uh there. <laughs> so uh next week next week I'm I'm probably gonna switch because like I said, I've had a couple of Don Carlos's, I've had a boatload of Davidoffs and uh I've been I, I just had a hankering for that green on it. I don't know why. I was like, Yeah, I gotta get that. And I actually went to a brick and mortar yesterday and picked it up. So, you know, yeah. that's crazy. No, I, I I agree with you. I tried the uh, when I take Dodger out for a walk. He's my he's our four legged kid, you know. It, it, you know I I because my wife, you know, like I said, she's she's got she's got has asthma, and so even if I smoke it out of the garden, she can still smell it waffling through the air. And so I try to be very you know conscientious of that. So I'll take Dodger out for a walk, and I'll smoke a, you know light up a cigar, and it's it's a whole different. That's a whole different experience. You try to walk it the is, dog. It is. Walk, it is. I, watch, I, watch what's happening. Get the cadence of my cigar. You know, I, I'm every one and a half to two minutes in between. Then I have to stop and relight it. And then I have, because he does his business, then I got to go pick that up. Then I got to stop again because he decides every <laughs> tree and every post on the way back to the house, he's got to leave his territorial mark. So by it's just, I'm done. I mean, by the time I'm, I'm at the third post, I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'll just save this, and maybe when I get back home, I can sneak off to the side of the house and smoke over there. But it never works out. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my other what I've been smoking, uh, of course, I, I go with I'm seasonal. I like the seasonal stuff. I, I think it's fun. So the Alec Bradley Black Market Filthy Hilligan uh, Barber Pole. Uh, the 2020 version, uh, out of Placentia's factory. Uh, it's a six by 50, uh, Barbara Pol Toro strength is medium, uh, Honduran Candela and dark Nicaraguan Hal- Jalapa on the wrapper, uh, binders, uh, Ecuador, Sumatra. And then you're going to get your filler from Honduras, Panama, uh, man, you know, I, I've been smoking these now for the last three years. And, uh, I know he, Developed these back in 2010, I believe it's what it's been, uh, uh, or 2011, one of the two. Anyhow, uh, regardless, pretty cool cigar. I mean, you know, it's uh, you know March 17th. It's uh, you know we didn't have any festivities here in Dallas because we were on shutdown or lockdown at that time. We have one of the biggest uh, St. Patrick St. Patty's Day uh, parades here in in Texas. Over a hundred thousand attend this event uh shut down so here i am with my filthy hooligan on that day enjoying a cigar peppery i mean it's a pepper bomb uh, at the beginning then it leads into a creamy sweet cedar uh as you know a, a second third uh gets into the espresso uh, a little bit of nutty kind of a little smoke nuttiness there and then the uh, spice creeps back in and the pepper as well uh and, and, and you know towards the end of that second third and then the last third it all it turns a little harsh because uh, I think it's just it gets hot at that end, and by that point I'm done. So uh, I did give this a Stoke Geeks, uh, Stoke Geeks rating, uh, a fiver. Uh, for those of you who haven't had this, uh, definitely give it a try. You know, go back if you can find some of the uh, previous versions. Uh, you'll 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 start to see the very the differences uh, varying in in in, in strength. Uh, uh, and smoke content as well. Yeah. Yep. My yeah. next one. I, I just, had, um, I felt a yeah. little bit short changed, obviously for St. Patty's day. I had the Illusione Holy Candela. Uh huh. Lan- Lancero. That is awesome. That's an awesome stick, uh, right. as well. So, you know, I, I felt a little bit festive. I like Candela anyway. I don't just smoke it on St. Patrick's day, but you know, 
uh, you know, you try to find your, your little bit of uh, happiness through a world of extreme craziness now. Yes. I thought it was I thought it was crazy three months ago, right? <laughs> and yeah. now all of a sudden it's now a new crazy, right? Just when you think you it can't get any crazier, we're 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 all on the status. So and we're all on high alert. So yeah, that's a good choice. Uh before we wrap up, I just want to how are you gonna lay this out? Are you gonna use hashtag stogie geeks and What's the other hashtag you're gonna use? What are you smoking? Is that is that what you're gonna yeah. use? Use both yeah, of those. What are you smoking? So that yep. yeah yeah. So anything that you post, I would use hashtag Stogie Geeks and hashtag What are you been smoking? And then post it. When you post it, uh, I will share it. Please ping me privately. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't I don't um, monitor social media as much as I should. Uh, I only usually response if ping to. So either tag me in it or whatever you want to do, because then I'll stop to participate uh, as well, and 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 we'll 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 see where it goes for sure. Yeah, pretty good. I, I do want to say though, my short-lived, uh, you know, staff was really short-lived. It was literally three weeks. Now I can't. Uh, they don't want to be around me. I don't want to be around them in a friendly way. So yeah, now I'm doing everything myself again. <laughs> and it's been a learning <laughs> curve, to be honest with you. Uh, at oh. 50 plus, at 50 plus, learning new mediums and learning new tricks of the trade uh, as far as the uh, media goes. Man, I, I, it's, 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 I'm so tired by the end of the, the hour I spend a day just trying to learn you know, what I need to do, how I need to you know, get it all wrapped up. It's, it's a workout. <laughs> so you lost your assistant for the time being. Yeah, 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 definitely. You know, she's, you know, the, her school, you know, their college, they were going to the uh, junior local junior college they were attending. Uh, everything is shut down. Uh, they're taking classes through uh, the so uh, through media uh, online. Uh, and then there's, you know, of course, just, you know, being safe for everyone's sake and, uh, you know, just right. staying in their designated areas. And so, yeah, that that, that was short lived. But I have but we still have Johnny, right? Yeah, Johnny, you here? <laughs> hey. Awesome. Johnny, we want to thank Johnny for uh Yes. He's the only he's the only one who's allowed to report to the G Unit Studios and he's making all of this happen for all of the shows uh weekly. So uh Johnny, make sure you stay safe and, and, and whatnot as well. And thank you for all you do. And thank you for what is this thing called? Oh, Scarlet. Yeah, the Scarlet. That was a great addition. I don't know if I'm gonna give it back. <laughs> You know, I know I'm not giving it back for at least three weeks or so, right? Or or all longer, who knows? Hey, it'll be good for your conference calls. I would use that for them. So it'll kind of, it'll silence you out from using your regular computer mic. Uh, It's got the unidirectional mic. So if Caden's saying daddy or Elmo or whatever he's saying, uh, (laughs) it'll, it'll, they won't be able to pick that up as much. And and it's nice because it kind of takes you away from, you know, you don't have to put the earbuds in. It's over the ear. So it's, it's, it's pretty noise uh, canceling. So. Um, yeah, I mean, if you have it, we'll be going remote for Stogie Geeks probably for, you know, the foreseeable future within the next few weeks. So um, use it for yeah. your conference calls. Get used to it. Uh, the quality's great, and um, and it sounds awesome. So awesome. it'll be one more thing that my son wants to yank off me as he's on my lap while I'm on every conference call when he's up. Like I said, he's been speaking to leading cybersecurity professionals around the world, and he's been speaking to Stogie Geeks conference calls that are offline. Uh, around the, the, the nation <laughs> uh, as we speak. So if I can teach him to get emails back, then he, he, he has a job. There you go. <laughs> you know, there you go. For he's, sure. our, he's our new assistant. Yeah, he, yeah, he's my new assistant, right? Yeah. Um, Stogie Geeks listeners, if you have any questions uh, or if you're going through a difficult time or whichever or you need a sounding board, don't hesitate to either reach out to Drew or myself Drew at StogieGeeks.com or Joe H at StogieGeeks.com. Um, we, we can help you out any any way that we uh, possibly can. Uh, you know, as as Drew has 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 a, a very good business acumen as well, um, and we can uh, help you out. And hopefully, uh, f- we can all get through this together. Or if you just want to post and just let us know what you're doing, but you definitely want to follow Drew. Um, on uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram and Twitter, as is are those the platforms that you're going to be posting? What have you been smoking, Drew? 
Yeah, we're going to clean that up as well. We're going to clean up all those because I have one for my family, one for my friends, one for the cigar shop, one for Stogie Geeks. And people have even asked me, like, which one do I go to? All right. So, I'm gonna, so what I'm, I'm going gonna, to do is I'm going to clean that up a little bit and uh, I'm going to make one. I know the Instagram one for Stogie Geeks is in works right now with uh, my people that were helping me out until this fires came yeah, forefront. So what, what we're going to do is uh, when Drew shares it on his uh, for you Stogie Geeks listeners to make it easier for you. If you go to facebook.com forward slash Stogie Geeks, like the page, I will share Drew's uh, information as he pings it to me. Uh, and we can all keep the conversation going all week long uh, over on the, the Stogie Geeks social media, Stogie Geeks website. I'll also put those um, things on the Stogie section of Stogie yes. Geeks. So if you go to Stogie Geeks, uh, there's a button there for Stogies. I'll put some of those there as we get those going. And you can um, we, we can keep the conversation going all, all, all week long and, 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 and be in touch with each other. I know there's been a lot of virtual hearths online. I think that yeah. that's super cool that people are just getting together and talking about some, some super cool content uh, there. Um, I, I got invited to two of them. And time constraints, I, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Uh, my workload's been been pretty crazy, but as as things start to calm down with this new norm, I'm hoping next week I can actively participate in some of those, and I'll share those uh, there too. Uh, don't forget, you can click and listen to uh, the Stogie Geeks podcast. Just go to stogiegeeks.com or type in Stogie Geeks on all of your podcast catches, and you'll be able to uh, get that there. Drew, any final words before I wrap up? Yeah, I just want to say, you know, everybody out there, you know, God bless, uh, you know, uh, just keep in mind, you know, all, you know, we're all in this together. Uh, definitely. Uh, we share everybody's, you know, uh, you know, process through this. Uh, and and this is a good this is a good time, I think, for everybody to, to reflect uh, on what's happening and, and how we can be better uh, at helping out one another and uh, neighbors and things of that nature. Um, so. Other than that, man, uh, keep smoking, and uh, I'll see you on What Are You Smoking? There you go. Behind every cigar, I want to let you know that there's a story worth knowing. If you can shop local, go for it. I understand. Make sure if you do shop local, keep your distance and be safe. Get in and out of there. Maybe go for walks. Um, walks throw off my cadence, but... Uh, if you walk with a cigar and you have any tips for me, I've never been a yes. cigar walker. I've o I've always been a brick and mortar guy. Like I've always had the quote unquote freedom to just roll into a cigar shop and boot up my laptop and continue working. Um, even though I can work virtual, but working from home brings a new challenge uh, there, there too. Um, but the the cigar walks, I don't, I don't know. I, I can't wait to be back in G Unit Studios and have the luxury. It's amazing uh, the small things that you're like, wow, this is different. You know what yeah. I mean? Wow, I'm not having my first cigar at one o'clock in the afternoon. It's crazy. You know? Right? If it, if it was four months ago and, and little Caden was taking a 10 o'clock in the morning nap and, and a one o'clock in the morning nap, I'd be telling a different story. However, uh, that's not so much anymore. So that's where it's crazy. I want to give a special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Stogie Geeks, be safe, be well. We're all going to get through this. We will see you next time. Peace. <laughs>